Hey, hey guys, welcome to the video. So, something I've been talking about for a long time is that you shouldn't be so concerned about scaling if you're getting into web app development. This is something I see out there on the interwebs and the YouTubes. People are talking about scaling, scaling, ah. First of all, it's not a major issue for 99.99% .99 of web apps these days. Why? Because bandwidth is huge today. Browsers are very efficient, and the programming languages that we use to create web apps, JavaScript, PHP, uh, Python, etc., Java, C Sharp, they're very efficient. But most importantly, the databases are very fast, and the database servers have super powerful hardware lots of RAM, lots of CPU, uh, SSD drives, etc. That all said, the bottleneck, as I've been saying for many years now, as it is in the 90s, as it is, as it is today, the bottleneck in most web apps is not going to be in your JavaScript code, it's not going to be in your PHP code, it's not going to be in your Java code, it's going to be in your database access. So, uh, two point, a pretty long comment, well it's not that long, a comment put under a video I put out a little while ago, well, a few days ago, it's a uh, very much in line with what we're talking about here. A lot of details, so let me just jump into it. I'm a senior software engineer working with a world-class dating brand. I have been on back-end and front-end for years. I have managed infrastructure as well. We have had times when our marketing team has had their interaction with media, released articles, interviews, videos, and it brought us millions of traffic. The bottleneck is always database read and write. This is my experience as well, whether it be with my dating app, with Studio Web, uh, with many other apps, client apps, it's always about the database. The bottleneck is always the database read and write. Even bad code affects database at the end, such as extra unnecessary reads, or reads that could be combined but separate due to inexperienced devs writing it. Again, he's talking about the SQL code and the logic of the infrastructure that you put together, not the language in of themselves. Languages are very performant these days. My point is that choosing a language for your backend takes more reasoning than just simply say, let's make the entire stack one language, or we're heading towards serverless future. Servers will remain, trust me. You need to look at the underlying layers of the language, like what it is written by, how the OS runs it, memory management, caching, etc. when it comes to choosing one language for your problem to solve. Again, one of the things I keep saying is that there's no necessarily objectively better or best language. There is only a better language for the particular job. With experience, you learn to choose a language for the job. And it's not always performance issues as well you have to look at. You have to look at business issues. Uh, languages are tools for you. You need to choose wisely or the business will not survive as far as it relates to its tech. Always remember, you can't only have a wrench doing everything. That does not work. You can't use a screwdriver to tighten a nut. Our stack is built with Laravel and Vue. Uh, uh, that's what Studio Web is built with, by the way. We have we've never had problem scaling because it has nothing to do with the language. Let me say it again. We have never had problem scaling. This is an app with millions of users because it has nothing to do with the language. But the language and the framework matters when it comes to optimizing the code. And optimizing the code is done first before just simply scaling your infrastructure. Optimizing will bring you lots of improvements in terms of speed with little to zero cost. He's talking about just more efficient architectures, uh, better SQL, smarter SQL. There's more you can do on that as well. Bef well I'll just complete his, his little comment here and then I'll give you the other points. Long story short, people tend to choose a framework language for their front end or back end based on their opinions only. Do research, check benchmarks, hear from people who have been through real business problems and try not to become a fan of a framework or language. I hope these words help. Uh, that's all the reasons behind sharing it. So he just wanted to share his experiences. One of the things you can do from my experience, having been writing database apps since the 90s, is 
the one of the ways you can optimize uh, your speed of your application. And trust me, in the 90s, it was much more important because the bandwidth was much less, uh, servers were much less powerful, uh, servers had much less RAM, uh, browsers were much less powerful, uh, personal computers were much less powerful, uh, languages were much less optimized. For example, when PHP went from PHP uh, 4 to 5, there was a big performance jump. When it went from f PHP 5 to 7, there was a 50% performance jump jump and so yes languages can become more efficient but today they're all pretty good anyway one of the best things you can do is design your databases properly now i'm thinking sql databases which the vast majority of the time that's what you're going to be using so when you design your databases properly proper table structure proper normalization of the tables which is a process of uh, structuring tables so that the information is stored in an efficient manner using things like perhaps stored procedures which are basically pre-compiled database queries that allow you would allow the database server to generate uh, the results you want far more quickly because it's compiled and optimized by the database so let me break that down in non-nerd so database servers are just basically programs applications that store data there's MySQL, there are MS SQL servers, Oracle, and there's many others, Postgre, et cetera, et cetera. So one common functionality that are built into any database server, remember, a database server is just an application, it's just a program designed to store data, designed to store data. You can uh, tell the database to take a standard SQL query that you write, and how you well you write that query will also affect speed in a big way. And you can say, compile this and pre-compile uh, pre this so that uh, it runs so much quicker. So what happens, the database server can compile that SQL query in such a way, and so that it just runs much more quickly than it would be if, if you just sent that request through, let's say, your PHP layer, or your C-sharp layer, or your Java layer, et cetera, or your JavaScript layer. So what you do is you, you write your SQL query, you compile it, and it's called a stored procedure, or they call it a stored proc. And then what you do in your application layer, your JavaScript, your PHP, your, your C-sharp, your Java, et cetera, you then call the stored procedure, the stored proc, rather than sending a direct SQL query. Because when you send a direct SQL query to a SQL database, you're saying, hey, give me this, 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 and this, and this, and this or do update this table, update that, and update this, and give you that. So you send that to the database server, server processes all that in real time, cool. But if you create a stored procedure where you basically send the information, you send this query in advance to the uh, database server, it will be able to, in advance, optimize that SQL query. Query is just a fancy word for a uh, question or a command. So it will be able to optimize that in the stored procedure, compile it, so that when it, you do call it, it's already pre-prepared. It's like ordering in advance your groceries or your pizza, so that when you get to the pizza uh, restaurant, the pizza is already cooked. And then you just go leak, get the pizza much quicker. Same thing with stored procedures. It's like sending the order in advance, and when then you need to actually place that order, it's able to, it's able to be prepared for you in a fraction of the time. So that's just one example of using databases to speed up uh, the speed of your applications. Because again, the biggest bottleneck most of the time, as the guy said in his comment, is the database, reading and writing to the database. That's usually the biggest uh, bottleneck by far. So uh, back in the 90s, is a little history, there was a huge battle, especially in the mid, late 90s, between the DBAs, the database administrators on one hand, and the software developers on the other. Now the software developers in the Java camp, Java was the, the standard at that point. It was like the hot new language and everybody was using it. So the Java people wanted to have everything Java, and which was silly, because the Java whole Java narrative was uh, write once, run everywhere. 
so that they want everything self-contained so you can move your Java app from server A to B to C without having to reconfigure. That was the ideal, it was a fantasy in practicality. Anyhow, that aside, because of that ethos, that way of thinking in the Java community, they didn't want to use the power of the database software. They didn't want to use the power. So what they would do is they would simply use databases, as I would call them, dum-dum tables or dum-dum databases, meaning they would just use them as glorified flat files to a great extent. Where I would say, no, no, you've got to use the tools built into the database, like stored procedures, as I just talked about. The Java people were, a lot of them were against that because they said, you're tying yourself too much to the database. Now, <laughs> one of the silly aspects of that argument, the argument you don't want to use stored procedures or use the power built into the database because you don't want to tie yourself into the database. One reason that's a silly argument is because I've, in my career, I think I've changed databases once in an application, just once. And when you do do that monumental change, going from database A to B. So I went from, I think I went from MySQL to Microsoft SQL Server. So I had to convert everything from MySQL to SQL Server. Um, that was a big job. Fortunately, I found uh, a pre-written script that did most of the work for me, and I just had to reconfigure a few things. Um, most of the work was in the research, not actually the implementation. Anyway, that aside, in my career over since 94, I've never seen a production application go from database A to B. I'm sure it's done on occasion, but it's not a very common event. So I would not shy away from using the power built into so many relational database systems, DBMSs, database management systems, MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, et cetera, Postgre. I wouldn't uh, turn my back from using these processes because you, you're worried that maybe one day you might one day change from that database to another. That's silly. Anyway, there you go. I went off on a tangent, but it's all about the same thing to help you to understand how important databases are when it comes to the speed and efficiencies of your web apps. Don't be so concerned about the framework or libraries when it comes to speed. When it comes to speed, it's typically the database. That's where the problem is most of the time. So if you're interested in being mentored by me, take a look below or go to unclesteph.com. I have a mentoring program, which is my bootcamp. It's unique because it gives you the best of both worlds. You have live support through our coaching sessions and you have the freedom and flexibility of distance and um, self-paced learning model using my software, which I've been developing over a decade, working with many districts in the US and abroad. Those two combined give you the experience of personalized coaching with the flexibility of self-paced learning. All right, thanks for watching the video. Cheers. Code long and prosper. That single gun, double gun, true nerd. Well, if you can do it like this, see how quick that is? Quick draw.